The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. It's only fair to warn you that this is very definitely a haunted house. Yes, there's a good old-fashioned ghost at large in these dark and dismal corridors. What's that? You are not afraid of ghosts? Yes. Why should you be? You've heard far too many ghost stories to be frightened by just another phantom. But uh, be patient. We believe there's something particularly terrifying about the spirit who is about to jump out of your radio at you. We advise you not to turn off the light when you hear this sound. drama, You Owe Me a Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Patricia Elliott. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and General Electric. I'll be back shortly with Act One. place more fitting to begin a ghost story than a graveyard. But no, the Avondale Gardens would never use such a stark and grisly term, for this is the finest and most elegant cemetery in the Midwest, according to their brochures. And only the finest, and may I add, richest families bring their dear departed to these peaceful grounds and manicured lawns. No swirling mist envelops the funeral procession which is now taking place. The sun shines brightly on the mourners, and yet something in the face of Irene and Daniel Weston would chill the blood of any passerby as they stand at the newly dug grave and solemnly stare at the white headstone. Elizabeth Weston, beloved daughter of Irene and Daniel Weston, born 1954, died... 1976. Daniel, please. It's time to go. 22 years old, Irene. I know she was 22 years old, and I know she's dead. And that's enough to know. Is it, Irene? Is it? The car is waiting. Cooper's been waiting for an hour. No. If you want to go home, go home. And leave you here? How would that look? Your friends are all waiting for you, Irene, wearing their best morning clothes. Go home. See them. Not without you. You can't wait to cry all over you, Irene. To show you how sad they can look. Don't spoil their fun. Oh, dear God, how can you talk to me like that? Now, in this place. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I, I don't know what I'm saying. All I can think about is her. There's no point in thinking about her. Elizabeth is gone. Oh, no, no. I don't mean Elizabeth. I mean her sister. We've already decided there's no point in asking Heather to come home. You decided that, Irene. I still say she'd want to be here now. Oh, Daniel, it's over. There's nothing Heather could do here except... Well, except what you're doing. Wallowing in your own melancholy. Oh, yes. yes, I know. That's how you feel. <laughs> it, it's getting windy. I'm cold. Go home, I said. Take the car. I'll manage. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll write to Heather this evening. I'll tell her what happened. She can light a candle for Elizabeth in Rome. The city is filled with churches. Let Heather mourn her there. And you think that would take care of it? Yes, I do. You're wrong. Heather would want to be here. She was Elizabeth's twin. She loved her sister. How could she love a sister she never saw? No. All right, Daniel. 
If you want to struggle home by yourself, I'm leaving. Goodbye. Irene? Yes? You're afraid to have Heather home, aren't you? What? You're afraid of her questions. Goodbye, Daniel. Oh, that's quite all right, Mrs. Weston. One second, I'll open the car door for you. Thank you. Isn't Mr. Weston with you? No, he decided to stay there for a while. But uh, how, how will he get home? I'd say that's his concern, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Help me! Uh, ma'am, did you hear something? Only the wind. Uh, I could have sworn I heard something. Well, the wind is like that. Close the door, Cooper. I'm freezing. Yes, sir. I'm in. Well, madam... It's Mr. Weston, I'm sure of it. Daniel? Oh, good heavens. Cooper, hurry. Uh, hurry. Mr. Weston, where are you? Cooper, please. Uh, Mr. Weston, what what happened? It, 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 it's my heart. Oh, my heart. Daniel. Uh, Daniel, what is it? Yes, yes, Mrs. Weston, I think it's another attack. Oh, dear Lord. She, she called me. She called to me, I mean. Elizabeth. Daniel, don't try to talk, please. <laughs> Cooper. See if you can find a telephone. Get Dr. Sherman here. Yes, ma'am. It's too late. Daniel. It's too late. It's the last time, Irene. I know. Daniel, I know it is. Please, just like Now, now you'll have to call her. You'll have to tell her to come home. <laughs> For my funeral. I've never been to Europe myself, Miss Weston, but my wife says as soon as the youngest gets herself married, who knows? <laughs> They've uh, widened this road, haven't they? Oh, yes, three, four years ago. You've been away that long. Uh, longer, Cooper. My, my. You must talk real good Italian by now. <laughs> well, there's the house. Oh, and there's your mother, right out front. Uh, oh, Heather! Oh, oh, Mother, oh, how wonderful it is to see you. It's been so terribly long. Oh, it's wonderful to be home, Mother. Uh, but for such a horrible reason. Oh, darling, come into the house. Uh, you must be exhausted. Oh, I'm all right. Oh, thank you for sending Cooper to the airport. It made things much easier. Oh, my darling, you look marvelous. Uh, so pretty. Oh, Mother. Heather, you got prettier in Italy. It's the way the men make you feel. Oh, Mother... Tell me all about Elizabeth, darling. It can wait. No. No, please, tell me now. I know how Father died. I know about his bad heart, but... Why, Elizabeth? She just took sick, Heather. We brought her back from that place. They couldn't keep her any longer. Yes, you wrote me about that. And she was home only for a few days, and she developed this fever, this terribly high fever, you see. And then... She died. Oh, why didn't you tell me that? Why didn't you let me come home so I could at least have seen my sister just once before she died? My, my own twin. Oh, Heather, come inside. I've got a fire going. Well, hello there. Oh, I didn't know you had company, Mother. Heather, I'd like you to meet Martin Henley. Our new neighbor. Well, not really so new, Irene. Been over a year since we bought the Verdon place. Well, I mean, uh, new to Heather. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, your mother told me you've been living abroad for quite some time. Yes, I have. Uh, Switzerland first. I went to school in Lausanne, then a year in London, then Rome. Uh, Heather was with the embassy. Oh, don't get the wrong idea. I wasn't a girl diplomat. I was just a secretary. <laughs> well, in any case, I'm sure it's nice to be home. But uh, not under these circumstances, of course. All right should have been here long before when my sister Elizabeth came home. Did you meet her? No, I'm afraid not. Your twin seems to have been ill from the moment she arrived. Oh, uh, Heather, would you like a drink? 
Or do you drink now? Yes, I can use something to warm me. Some wine, if you have it. Well, no Chianti, but I think we have some sherry. Uh, uh, that is, I'm sure Irene has some. Sherry will be fine. You know, I uh, suggested to your mother that the four of us go out to dinner tonight. Here's your wine. Thank you. Uh, what I meant by the four of us, I I have a son, David. You like David, Heather. Uh, he's very easygoing. Just out of the Navy. Just about getting his land legs back. But he's still got a sailor's eye for a pretty girl. <laughs> <laughs> he thought you might enjoy that, darling. Enjoy it? Oh, I'd love it. In fact, why don't we have a party? We can hire a band and dance the night away. Oh, darling, you misunderstood. No, I, well, I, I, I'm just talking about a, a quiet evening, of course. Your mother and I just thought... I'm glad after... you made all these arrangements for my amusement, Mr. Henley, but my father and my sister are dead only one month. I think I can wait just a little bit longer for continental food. Heather, you don't have to be offensive. If you'll excuse me, I want to take a walk. Oh, darling, it's cold out. I want to see the ground, And Mother. it's very dark. You needn't come with me. I wouldn't want to take you from your company. Ah, the old stone bench. I haven't sat in this bench for ages. I wonder if Elizabeth ever sat here. Maybe that's why you bumped into me. You're the one who was in the way. Well, well, how did I know you'd come charging out of those trees? They're my trees. Who are you? Uh, David Henley. I was supposed to be my father here. And me. Yeah, I guess so. If you're uh, Heather? Yes, I'm Heather. Oh. Uh, do, do you mind if I went inside? I, I'm cold. Your mother said you were pretty. She didn't say you walked so fast. <laughs> want the truth? I'm glad that Dad and your mother went to the Red Barn by themselves. I hate the food there. Too, uh, continental. Oh, for my taste. <laughs> Give me a hamburger anytime. Is, does that bother you? Oh, I haven't seen a real American hamburger in four years. Oh, wait till you try mine. In the Navy, I was known as the Barbecue King. Your father was a Navy man, too, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. now, how'd you guess? Mm -hmm. Looks like the type. Is your, uh, father with it? Yep. All he's got to me. So you're an only child. Huh. I might as well have been an only child. I never saw my twin sister. How come? Oh, well, she wasn't well when she was born. Some kind of congenital ailment. She had to be in hospitals, sanitariums, uh, places like that. Mm. She didn't die in a hospital, though, did she? No, no. No, when she was 21, she, she was allowed to come home. Oh, I see. Huh. I sent her a present here. A welcome home gift. It was an antique locket I found in Naples. The kind with room for two portraits. Mm, yeah. I took two identical photos of myself and I... I placed them inside. Oh. Hey, you're pretty emotional about this sister of yours, aren't you? Uh, why shouldn't I be? No reason is too obvious to mention. Because I never saw her. You got it. Oh, but you're wrong. I did know Elizabeth. <laughs> How could I not know her? She was the other half of me. What? Oh, don't you know the theory about twins? That, that they're the same person, divided in half. Only an accident of biology separates them at birth. But they can't ever be truly separated. Mm, sounds pretty romantic. <laughs> like most legends. I think the legends are true. I honestly believe there were times when Elizabeth felt my joys and my pain and I hers. I, um, I think your hamburger's ready. What do you want on your hamburger? Oh, well, everything you got. <laughs> Onion? Lettuce and tomato? Uh -huh. Pickle? Of course. Ketchup or mayonnaise? Both, please. Both? You mean it? I said everything, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> your burger is 12 inches high. I can manage it. Watch. Mm. 
<laughs> and you see what I mean? <laughs> I told you I would starve for a real American hamburger. <laughs> You've got ketchup all over your mouth. Do I? Oh, where's the mirror? Uh, it, it's over here. Oh, that's not the only thing with the way I... The way I look. Why didn't you say something about my hair and look at it? Oh, it's just a little wind blown. Oh, that was the strangest wind out there this evening. That's why I was running. The wind and something else. What else? I don't know. Oh, forget it. <laughs> you know, every time I look in a mirror, well, I don't know if I'm seeing myself or Elizabeth. Well, now that my hair's combed, I guess I can finish my hamburger. Yeah, you... <gasps> Good Lord. Well, what's the matter? Uh, the mirror. What about it? Well, Oh, it, it must be the light or my eyes or something. I... What do you mean? Well, I could swear that when you walked away from that mirror, your face was still there. It appears that Heather Weston is being haunted, and by the other half of herself. But what does Elizabeth Weston want of her sister? They say that ghosts only return to Earth because of a deed undone, a promise unfulfilled, a vengeance unobtained. What force has brought Elizabeth's restless spirit back to her home? And is that force one of good or evil? We'll learn more when I return shortly with Act Two. Weston has come home. Home to a mother whose mourning period for her dead father and sister seems to have been abbreviated. But Heather cannot forget their existence that quickly. She knows that there is still a mystery to solve. And if she didn't know it, her sister's spirit seems to be determined to remind her. Heather? Are you in there? Yes, mother. What on earth are you doing in here? Oh, just looking around. Didn't you say that Elizabeth used this bedroom? We did have her in here for a few days, but she seemed so unhappy that we moved her to the middle bedroom. Your old room. Oh, well, then maybe that explains it. Explains what, dear? Why, I can't find anything. Not the slightest thing that belonged to her. Why on earth do you want to? I just do, that's all. Did you store Elizabeth's things somewhere? No, I haven't stored anything. Excuse me. Where are you going? To look in the other bedroom. Heather, wait. H Heather, what's the point of all this? You won't find anything belonging to Elizabeth. I won't if I won't look. Well, darling, there isn't anything to find. She brought almost nothing with her from that place. Mother, she had to have clothes. She had to have personal belongings, books, records, a diary. Oh, everyone accumulates things, Mother. Heather, let me save you the effort. There's nothing of Elizabeth in this room either. Not here, not in the whole house. But why? Why was everything taken away? There was so little to begin with. There had to be something. But she wore clothes. She wasn't an animal. Or did you have to burn them? Was it that sort of illness? No, darling. A fever. Nothing contagious. Then why is everything wiped away, scrubbed so clean of her? I mean, you'd never know that Elizabeth existed. Oh, she existed. Briefly. But she was here. Then why... Why did you do this? Why did you remove all traces? Because there are some things in life that don't call for souvenirs. Oh, yes. I understand. Oh, what's this? Oh, the drawer doesn't close all the way. It, it's because something's stuck in the corner. Oh, there. I've got it loose. Mother, look. It's the locket, the one I sent her from Naples. Yes. Oh, so you did give it to her. Yes, I, I did, darling. Or... I tried. Why? Didn't she like it? 
Well, for some reason, she was afraid of it. Afraid? But why? I don't know. I, I told you that Elizabeth was strange sometimes. Do you suppose it was the identical portrait? Well, perhaps. Oh, Mother. That was it, wasn't it? Those photographs must have seemed so disgustingly healthy when, when she was so ill. Oh, you may be right, Heather. Oh, so the only memento I have of my sister is the one I sent her myself. <laughs> Heather, you're sure you want to sleep in this room? Oh, yes, Mother. Of course, it used to be my room. I mean, because of her. Oh, don't be silly. It doesn't bother me that my sister used this room. Why shouldn't she? Well, all right. Good night, then, darling. Good night, Mother. And sleep well. Yes, yes, I'll try. I just wish this weather would change. The wind never seems to stop. Oh, well, it's this time of year, Mother. That's all. Damn this time of year. Well, good night, Angel. Good night, Mother. Whew. It is much too windy. Huh. I'd better shut that window. Oh. Oh. There it is again. I do hear it. I, I do. There's someone out there. going to be much of a riding companion. I'm just feeling too depressed. You're not depressed. You're haunted. Am I right? You don't believe me. I know. Neither would my mother, if I told her. Told her what? That my sister has come back from the dead. Oh, wow. I don't know why. But Elizabeth is trying to reach me. She tried the moment I came home. Is that what you were running from when you bumped into me? Maybe I shouldn't run. Maybe I should let her reach me. So you could talk things over with your better half? I didn't say she was my better half, just the other half of me. You know something? I think this twin theory of yours is dripping wet. It was the locket that drove her away. Hmm? Oh, the, the locket I sent for Naples. Oh, yeah, yeah, you told me about that. Mother says she wouldn't accept the gift. She was frightened of it. 
frightened her away last night, too, when she tried to get into my room. Well, they drive vampires away with crucifixes or a string of garlic. I'm not going to do anything at all to drive Elizabeth away. I'm going to let her come to me. Mm. That idea doesn't scare you? She's my sister. No. Can I ask you something? Yes? If you're not scared, then how come you're wearing that locket? I'm very angry with you, Heather. About what? Martin says we're seeing ghosts. Martin said that. David told him about your conversation. This this mad idea of yours. You have one bad dream and suddenly your house is haunted. David had no right to say that to his father. So it's David's fault. This was none of Martin Henley's business. But it's my business when he thinks my daughter is capable of believing such nonsense. What does it matter what that man thinks? It matters to me. If he thinks I have another feeble-minded daughter in my family. Mother. Oh, Heather. I, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean it. I, it's all right. No. That was dreadful. I, I shouldn't have no, said it. No, no, it's all right. Dreadful. <laughs> Did you think you were breaking the seal of some great mystery? You weren't. Yes, but you couldn't know. Do you think I guessed long ago what was really wrong with my twin sister? <laughs> that it wasn't a congenital ailment that put her into all those institutions? Yes, I guess that you knew. We went through all of those years fooling each other. And neither of us being fooled. I knew there was something wrong with her brain. But do you think it made me love my twin sister less? Didn't it? No, Mother. And I know you didn't love her less either. She was always a baby to me, Heather. The child inside her was never lost to me. Until the day she died. She called me mummy. You still mad at me? Hmm? I know you told him about my seeing ghosts. Mother was terribly upset about it. She thought I'd just about ruined her chances. The chances for what? Catching herself a new husband, of course. Don't tell me you haven't figured that one out. Mm, guess I had some inkling. Now, don't worry about it. You're not about to get a new sister. And the last thing I want you to be is a sister. There isn't the slightest chance. Now that your father knows what a crazy family we are. Uh, listen to me. You obviously don't know everything I told my father. You told him that I saw the ghost of Elizabeth? No, no, that's only half of it. And what is the other half? I told him that I believed you. You what? I believed you, Heather, because I saw her, too. Remember that night you were having hamburgers? I saw your dead twin in the mirror. I thought you said it was your imagination or your eyesight. I've never believed in ghosts before. But I'm willing to have someone prove this one exists. But how? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Have you ever heard of a woman named Margaret Collodi? No. No, who is she? Well, she was a famous medium in her day. Now, I don't even know if she does this sort of thing anymore, but when I heard she'd settled as close as Fairmont Village, I thought it was worth calling on her. <gasps> so that's why we're going there. Mm-hmm. I- is that all right with you? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. If it's all right with Mrs. Collodi. Well, to be truthful, she didn't sound especially glad when I told her the point of our visit. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I haven't conducted a seance in 15 years. Things happened the last time I tried. Things I had no control over. Mrs. Collodi, we're willing to pay you for any service you can give us. It's been years. I'm telling you, my gift may be gone. Won't you listen to the problem, Mrs. Collodi? Miss Weston's sister was a twin. An identical twin. She's come back. I know she has. And, and, and I have to know why. I have to know what it is that she wants of me. A twin. Yes. Of course. I know about such things. Twins are strange ones, you know. Strange and wonderful all their lives, and sometimes beyond their lives. What do you mean? Twins are single souls, my child. Single souls that cannot be parted on this side of the curtain or the next. Wait a minute. That sounds pretty silly to me. What you have seen, what you have heard, has happened before to other twins. 
My child, your sister wants to be united with you again. United as one. But she's dead. Yes. She can no longer share your life with you. She can only share your death. If Mrs. Collodi is right, then Heather Weston may no longer be very happy to know what her dead sister yearned for. No matter how much she may want to see Elizabeth, Heather is perfectly willing to wait another 60 years for the pleasure of reunion. The question is, will Elizabeth let her wait? We'll find out when we return in a moment with Act 3. place in the western house this evening. A circle is being formed in the living room. Eileen Weston and her daughter Heather are sitting with Martin Henley and his son David. And all of them are watching an eccentric old lady named Margaret Collodi. But they're not here for purposes of ordinary conversation. This little group has gathered in the hope of talking to the dead. Well, let's get this nonsense over with. Mother, please. Uh, Mrs. Collodi, uh, tell us what we have to do. Do we uh, uh, join hands? Or... First, there must be darkness. Of course. All mediums have to work in the dark, don't they? Father, give the woman a chance. I warned your daughter. It's been many long years since I tried to contact the spirit world. And even when I had my powers, I had little control. Now, wait a minute. What does that mean exactly? Things would happen. Evil things sometimes. Oh, for heaven's sake. David... Please turn off the lights. Oh, sure. Now, we decided to do this thing. Let's do it. There. And now, what do we do? Now. Mrs. Clody. Mrs. Clody, are you all right? Oh, this is ridiculous. How long do we have to sit here like this? What's wrong with the woman? I think she's in a trance. That's what she wants you to think. I could almost swear that there's a light around her head. It's a trick, of course. You see? Mother, shut up. There is a light around her head. I could almost swear. It's a face. I've had enough of this. There is. There is a face. It must be her. It must be Elizabeth. No, no. It looks more like the face of a man. Good Lord. It's it's a man, Heather. No. No, David. Take care of your mother. Mother, are, are you all right, Mother? Please, oh. please, Mother, look at me, please. Yes, yes, I'm all right. But my father he came into this room. I, I saw him. Well, only, what did it mean? What, what, what was it he said? He said, you killed her. What do you mean, Mother? He meant that I killed Elizabeth. What? It's true. I did it. I killed my daughter. You never knew the real truth about your sister, Heather, because I never wanted you to know. Mother, I did know. I told you that. I knew that Elizabeth had some kind of mental deficiency. Yes. She had the mind of a child, but her body... Irene, it's only natural. The body grows and changes. Even if the mind can. No. No, you don't understand. Heather, you think you've seen your sister, seen her ghostly image looking just like you. Yes, I have. But your ghost is only in your mind. You've seen Elizabeth the way you imagined her to be, perhaps as she sometimes imagined herself. But they were identical twins, Mrs. Weston. They were born at the same moment. But they were not identical. Heather, your sister was different 
some accident of biology. You mean malformed in some way? She was twisted, oh, cruelly twisted, her spine, her face. Oh, dear. How you romanticized her, darling. There were times when you had me believing that Elizabeth was a mirror image of my lovely daughter. But then we'd visit her in one of those institutions, the place where we had hidden her away from the world. But, but what did she know? Me. She thought about you all the time with both shame and fear. That locket you sent her, it terrified her because she knew it wasn't her face. Irene, what did you mean before? You didn't really kill this poor creature. You said she died of a fever. Yes. I chose a clever weapon, didn't I? What do you mean? It began almost as soon as we brought Elizabeth home from the institution. The Montgomery home wouldn't keep patients over 21 years of age. So as a birthday present for your sister, we let her come home. We had to do it. At least until we could make other arrangements. And we gave her your room, Heather. It was where she became ill. Her fever was almost constant, and one night it rose dangerously. I knew she had to have medical attention. I knew she was suffering. I could hear the suffering in her voice as she called out to me. I knew my little girl would die without something to bring the fever to us. But I just walked out of that bedroom. And I knew that I would do nothing. Elizabeth was dead by morning. Daniel didn't speak one word to me until the day of the funeral. Oh, Mother, how awful for you. I know you loved her. I know you did. As did I. But love is not enough. Mrs. Colori. Oh... Are you all right? Listen to me, my child. Love is not enough. The spirit of your dead sister is determined to have the other half of her death. You must not remain in this house. Maybe, maybe she's right, Heather. If there's the slightest danger... I'll tell you what the danger is. The whole bunch of you being locked up as lunatics. Oh, yes. oh, David, the whole thing is nonsense and you know it. It's not nonsense if people are scared to the point of a nervous breakdown. What's that? It's just the wind, darling. What do you think it is? Your ghost? Uh, oh. Heather, would you would you think of spending the night at our place? No, no, I couldn't leave my mother. Well, no, she can come too. There is no place you can go. No place where the spirit of your twin cannot reach you. Look, I, I think that's just about enough, Mrs. Collodi. There is no place I have to go. This is my home. It was her listen, home too. Listen, I, I thought I heard something. You heard the wind, Irene. Oh, no, more than that. A voice. A voice in the wind, Martin. It's too easy to hear voices in the wind. There. I heard it. I know I heard it. I, I didn't hear anything. Maybe, maybe you can't hear it, but yeah. I do. Heather, Heather is calling your name. Yeah. Good Lord, you people are making me hear it now. Yeah, it's Elizabeth. She's outside. No, 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 no. Take it, take it easy. She wants me out there, David. Yes, she wants you. She wants you to come to her. But I'm going. Oh, Heather. I'm not afraid, Mother. Heather, come back. I'm not afraid of my Please, she's ready to stop her. Don't let her go out there. Heather. I'm here, Elizabeth. We cannot be one. No, I'm alive, Elizabeth. Can't you see? My sister. Heather, don't touch it. For God's sake, Elizabeth, let her alone. Elizabeth, it's me. It's your mother. I'm sorry for what I did, Elizabeth. I'm sorry. back home, I kept telling myself that I should go to the cemetery. It's not my favorite place, personally. I just thought that I should do it, that I should 
to hit the graves of my father and my sister. But I couldn't do it. I'm not so sure you should be here today, Heather. Not the way you've been feeling. But I have to be here, David. This time, I have three graves to visit. Three Graves, a family reunion for the Westons. Except that young Heather Weston still has a long and happy life ahead of her. Oh, yes, uh, we can tell you what happened to her. Heather married David Henley. They were very happy. And very recently, they were the proud parents of a set of lovely twins. I'll be back shortly. But then, how can you not believe, since you have a disembodied voice in your own home this minute? It's my voice, the voice of E.G. Marshall, who hopes to be haunting you again very soon. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Vicki Vola, Russell Horton, William Redfield, and Anne Petoniak. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Now, what did the cable say? Not that I do not know already. Dig again under cherry tree new information about golden cups. Uh, information? We have had no information about the gold cups, nor will we ever have any. The girl bringing the daffodils, calling them golden chalices. The dream she had about the man saying first, kiss me, and then, you are a pest. Which adds up to kiss pest where our gold cups were buried beneath a cherry tree. <laughs> then your Miss Roth shows up here with a cherry tree branch. You call that information? Making wild deductions from dreams and pieces of words and chance gifts? Hans, the girl knows something. Or she doesn't know that she knows heaven. She was not even born when we buried the gold cups beneath the cherry tree in Keith's place, but she knows something. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser Busch Incorporated. Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>